wide running on late, but it's too late and soft falling rain. An impressive Guinea's winner. It's been almost a year since Paul Hannigan took up his new job as retained jockey for His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum. A top priority for him has been to ensure that his family are able to adjust to a life divided between Dubai in the winter and Newmarket in the summer. Sam is the, uh, is the youngest, three years, and uh, Josh is six, six years. Uh, Anna is, um, I forgot her age, <laughs> Anna's 28, I think. She's going to kill me. Um, oh yeah, you can't remember my birthday or anything, it's fine. <laughs> I'm used to that now. <laughs> I'm probably getting it all wrong, but, uh, but yeah, um, I think, um, I think it's worked so well with Anna because she kind of knows the game. Paul does his job and he goes to work and he comes home and I always think he shouldn't have the hassles of home to think of as well because he's got enough to think about with riding. Ah, oh, that you know, the kids could, you could take them anywhere. As long as they're with daddy, they absolutely adore daddy. So you could take them anywhere and they're fine. They've, they've adapted really well. The Hannigan family were used to adapting. For two years, they had coped with stress and absences while Paul chased his goal of becoming UK champion jockey twice. I think after the last two years, you know, with the championships, I was kind of on, you know, really tired every day. It kind of, kind of took me a long time to recover from it. So um, I felt the new challenge would do me good. It was hard just because that he was just so tunnel visioned and he lost so much weight as well. He's not got any weight to lose, but he did lose a lot of weight when he, when he finished. So he was just exhausted, but it was all worth it. So he didn't mind. <laughs> it's a bit scary to be honest. Well, talk about mental states, you know, it's, um, it's just, it's 24-7. 20, you, you're coming back in from riding out in the morning, go straight to racing. You know, you could have two meetings a day and getting back at silly o'clock in the morning and doing the same all over again the next day. So it, it, it does take over and it becomes a, a bit addictive after a while. In the two championships, it was always me and the boys doing things, but the boys understand that daddy's got to go to work and if they want new football boots, then daddy has to go to work to get new football boots and things. So the priorities have changed now with, with, with the job. It's trying to just do as best as I can for Shake Hamdan. I think the days of running around the country like a madman have gone. I just want to do as best as I can, you know, for the boss. Paul's new job has meant a complete change of routine. Before he was based with one trainer, Richard Fahey, now he rides out for many different trainers in the UK and in Dubai, all of whom train horses owned by Sheikh Hamdan. You're going in to ride out for these different trainers who, who like it to be done their way, you know, and. Uh, I kind of struggled a little bit first because I've been with one guy for so long, Richard Fahey, and you know, then people like to do it their own different way. So it took time just to gel and settle, but I think it, you know, I've, I've done okay. You know, it kind of settled down a bit now and it's going good. The guys I would ride out for here would be Doug Watson and um, Erin Sharpie, um, who've been here a long, long time, um, done very well, and are still doing well. And it, and it works well, you know, it's nice to get to know the horses. I think one of my biggest problems is I kind of put pressure on myself, um, and I, I always have done. Um, but I found with this job, you put the blue and white silks on, everyone kind of is looking where you are. You know, they just stand out. It, you know, it's it Shake Hamdan's colours, very famous colours, a lot of history behind them. So a lot of people are looking for them colours in the race, and um, you kind of put a little bit too much pressure on yourself sometimes. But you know, it's it's part of the job and. It is hard, I think, because he does read papers and if he's given one a bad ride and he does listen to people, but he's always harder on himself than what anybody can ever be. Sheikh Hamdan, a uh, very knowledgeable man, uh, loves his horses and um, he's, he's very loyal and that gives me confidence to go out there and, and do my best. It is a huge honour for him to be wearing those silks and. He does, I think he worried at first, but now he's got his head around it. He's, he's getting there. I mean, Richard Hills has, has been an absolute gent. You know, he couldn't have been more helpful, so I'm very grateful. I was a bit worried um, how, he, how, he, how he would take it. Um, I never really got to know him as, as, as well as I have done now, but um, I honestly don't think I would be in this position if it wasn't for him. I don't think if I was in his shoes, I would have took it as well as he did. 
you know, this is only this is only the beginning. You know, this is only the start of it. It's I'm looking forward to you know coming seasons. Uh, you know, the new horses coming along, new two-year-olds, uh, which is very exciting. So, um, I, you know, I had a good start, but I, I just wanted to get to get better and you know and, and just do as do as do as best as I can.